Welcome to The Simple Truth. I'm John Furness, your uh, Bible teacher. And, and I just want you to start praying this week and, and the weeks to come for revival. Um, uh, God can start a revival anywhere, anytime, whenever he pleases. But, you know, when people really get serious about praying for revival and praying for it now and just see the glory of God that comes around, you know, that we need another touch of God in this, and not only in, in Quincy area that we're recording from, but also in our whole country. And a lot of times it happens with the teenagers. Uh, I've been hearing some reports of, of, of a lot of, of young people now receiving Christ. And, and that is such a joy to hear that young people are gathering together and praying and and, and interceding for for other people and 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 looking for what the holy spirit can do through them it is not over yet people god's got a plan for us and we can all be a part of it and we just need to be faithful and and continue in his work and in his walk uh, today we get to our lesson. Uh, I'm going to start in chapter 5 of ephesians where i've been going through the book of ephesians um, it starts talking about our walk, um, the do's and don'ts in the walk that we have. Um, starting with verse 1 of chapter 5 of Ephesians, uh, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Do you understand how much that means for us to be dear children? No matter what your age is, you can be a dear child of God. And we can be imitators of God. And all that is possible through what Jesus did for us at the cross. And not only at the cross, but but the teaching and the living that he did before that shows us how we can have that example of Christ in our lives. And then he gave us the power to be able to walk that out through his Holy Spirit, through salvation, through the uh, sanctification that, that God has, has done for us. And it's just a matter of us receiving, accepting, and living in it. So he says, be imitators of God as little children. Uh, we all can do that. Simply believing. And, and, and what he's talking about is that simple faith of, of just knowing that you know that you can trust him. Verse 2, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. You know, the sacrifices that, that is made uh, it gives off a sweet aroma to, uh, to, for God to, to smell. Uh, the sacrifice that Christ did on the cross, the sacrifices of, of, of his life here on earth, and that is a, a picture of worship. And your life and my life, as we live it before God, as we live it through Christ, uh, can be a life of, of, of a living sacrifice, as, as Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, I believe it is, uh, tells us that we are to be living sacrifices. We're not to be, you know... Uh, laid out on an on a altar and sacrificed that away to die because that's already been taken care of. Jesus did that for us. But our life should, re, should be a model, should be an imitation of Christ's walk here on earth. And that becomes a sweet uh, aroma to God and a, a worship in the sense of our daily walk. We worship God. In that simpleness of it, okay? Uh, but in verse 3, fortification and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness or foolish talk, talking or curse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather give thanks. Now here he gives us some, some things that we shouldn't be involved in. They are works of the flesh. Uh, they are uh, destructive. They are uh, discouraging. Uh, they tear down. 
uh, not only can be the body, this physical body that you and I live in, but also it can be harmful to other people uh, by hurting them, uh, tearing them down. And, and when he says, as, you know, um, which is not fitting. Those things are not fitting for, for a Christian to be doing. We're to be more Christ-like, and those things aren't. Uh, but he tells us to give thanks. Now, rather give thanks. He's talking about we are to give thanks for the things that Christ has done through our, through our lives and to give thanks for him giving us the power and the ability not to walk in those old ways, not to walk in darkness, but to walk in light. And we should be giving thanks right in the middle of this, this, these things he tells us not to do. He tells us, but rather give thanks. Give thanks that the Lord has come and given you power to overcome those things in your life that you may have been part of at one time. Let's go to verse 5. For this you know, that no fornicator unclean person nor covetous man who is an adulterer has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, but for because of these things the wrath of God comes on the sons of, of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. In other words, do not uh, condone those actions that they Paul just laid out here and told us not to do. Uh, he gave us the reason why. Because there's the fornicators, the deceivers, uh, the unrighteous persons, the, the covetous person that, that desires things that's not his and he's not able to get without deception. He's telling us that these things don't even be a part of because... The wrath of God will come upon those that are disobedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those that will not walk in, in the imitation of God through the, through the power of Jesus. Uh, they will see the wrath of God. Praise God right now that, that if you know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, you're not going to go through the wrath of God. But I feel sorry... And I pray for those that are still in that situation where they could. But if you're not telling about Jesus and tell them about the gospel and the great benefits of the gospel, then they too can be taken out of that, out of the darkness and put into the light uh, with the saints. Uh, don't be partakers in the old lifestyle. Be partakers in the new life through Christ Jesus that he's given us. Verse 8, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. In other words, we, our walk in our life, our, our whole outward uh, appearance should be different than from what it was in the past. Once you accept Jesus as your personal Savior, the old saying, uh, my want to change. Uh, what I used to want to do, I no longer want to do, but I want to do these things that are, that are lifting up, that are building up, that are encouraging, that is truthful. Uh, I no longer want to try to get something from someone for nothing. Uh, I want to be helpful. It's more important to give than to get, uh, it's the idea there. Uh, doing the right things because it's right. Being being holy as God is holy. Uh, we were once in darkness, but through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, we are now walking in the light, the truth of the word of God. Verse 9, for the fruit of the spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Now, in, in uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, I think it, it also gives us a picture of, of nine things that are the, the fruit of the Spirit. And the first one is love. The most important fruit of all that we can, we can have is God's love being poured out of us towards other people because of the love that he's shown to us. 
He has saved us. He has kept us from the wrath of God. He has given us a new life, uh, a new way of thinking, and, and he's doing it through the Word of God that we're studying here and that you should be reading on your own and you should be listening to your pastors as they, uh, godly men and women who, who teach the Word and, and, and prays for you and loves you as a, as a uh, true uh, Christians should do and given those things out they give the themselves more than, than what they receive and yet they receive and I receive good things and it's encouraged when I see or hear someone that's listened to the program or has listened to something that I've been teaching from the word of God and ex putting it out too, doing the same thing, uh, showing that love that Christ has been teaching us all through the Word. And so uh, those are good things, that are, and it is the acceptable things that God... If you want to walk in God's will, you need to be doing what the fruit of the spirits are. Uh, you need to study into those in a little bit more detail than what I'm going to today, and to simply know that you're a child of God, that you can trust Him for everything and that you take one step at a time and follow what He wants you to do, looking for the opportunities that He will bring to you. And they can happen anywhere and at any time, so you be ready for them and be willing to receive and to give. Now, uh, verse 11, And having no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, the, but rather expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manif manifestation, manified in light. Okay, what he's trying to, to bring out across this is that we should speak against those things that are not godly, those things that are not right, uh, those things that are not righteous. Uh, now, we, we need to do it in the right way, though. We need to follow the Holy Spirit as He shows us how to bring to light those things and so that uh, we do it in a, a uh, way that we don't tear down the people, we rebuke the sin, but we don't tear down the people and we encourage them to change and to do what God wants them to do. God has a plan for every one of us and yet if we don't follow that plan, we find ourselves off to the side of the road sometimes. We need to step back into His will by simply saying, Lord, where do we go from here? Uh, I have a simple prayer I, I pray before I, I do anything for the Lord, and that is, oh, Lord, what are we going to do now? And what that simply says is, Lord, I, I release control. I want you to guide me. I want you to show me what I need to do, what I need to say, and how to do. Uh, you know, I find myself when I'm praying for people, uh, especially one-on-one, -on -one, is I, I, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, Lord, what's the right way to pray for this person? What's the right words or the right action so that you get the glory? And then when we start doing those things, we find God moves in mighty ways and miraculous ways if we'll simply fully trust Him as a little child, like we said in verse 1, and follow after Him. But we're not to condone sin we are to speak against sin, but we're to encourage the sinner. You understand what I'm saying there? I hope you do. Uh, verse 14, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, for Christ has given you light. Now, sleep is something that sometimes in the Word, uh, Paul talks about sleep as, as those that have died. And, and this is not talking about physical death, but it's talking about spiritual death. Uh, awake you who are spiritually dead, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. In other words, He will give you 
life. It is an invitation, you might say, of, of recognizing who Christ is, uh, repenting of your ways, and accepting his love, his salvation, uh, his life into yours, so that you can have the light that Christ gives to every believer. Every believer. And we become from spiritually dead to spiritually alive. We are now spirit beings living in a physical body. Verse 15. Uh, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Boy, he could have been talking about today, couldn't he? Uh, he says that after you've been accepted, after you've accepted Christ as your Savior, after you've become light through Christ, then we are to walk carefully in the way that we walk, so that we we're not walking foolishly as we once did, and acting a fool. And I could tell you stories about that on myself that I'm not going to, but to to be wise. In other words, that you and I change our attitudes, uh, we change our way of life, we change so that uh, no longer it's not the flesh that is leading us, but the Spirit of God that's leading us. And we learn how to do that through reading His Word, studying His Word, and meditating on His Word. It's important we do all three, because... Because it's alive and it wants to speak to you about things in your life to help you. God has never been out to hurt you. He's always been there to help you. And now, if you're a child of God, even more so. But those that are disobedient, they will see the wrath of God at some point in time. And we hate to hear about that, but that's the other side of the coin. And you need to know that. So follow God. Walk in wisdom with Him. And the wisdom you're going to find is in the Word of God. And because we're in evil days, just look around you. Don't take, you know, you can turn the TV on and, and, and watch the news even and, and see it. That we're in evil times. Uh, verse 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not... Be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. In other words, wisdom. This wisdom that he's talking about is what we find in the Word of God that we, we learn by watching other Christians. We learn by the way Jesus walked on this earth that we walk after him. And yet, verse, he tells us to be filled with the Spirit. Now, you receive the Spirit when you receive Christ as your Savior. And then there is a, what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a filling of the Spirit. And I want you to understand that is not a one-time filling. That is something that we need to constantly be filling us with the Spirit. Uh, because as we give out... Uh, these bodies get tired. Uh, our spirit also gets tired. And so we need to have that refilling on a constant basis so that we can continue to do the work of God, that we continue to touch people's lives, that we continue to be an encouragement to other people. And so the way we do that is by reading the Word of God, of course, in prayer, but also other people. That's why we have worship in our churches. Uh, that's why you can worship by listening to the radio station and listening to Christian music uh, and, and, and worshiping as you're going to work or coming home or going to the grocery store. Um, you can worship alone, but you can also worship in a group, uh, as in a church setting or a Bible study, so that you are being refilled with the Spirit of God to do the works that he has called you to do. And I want you to understand, unfortunately, there's too many of us in this world today that's in the church, saved, born again, you know, 
And still, we're still living an abnormal lifestyle. We should be living a normal lifestyle, and that is doing the things that Jesus did. Healing the sick, praying for the sick, raising the dead, doing the miracles that he did. Not that we have that ability, but the Holy Spirit in us can do that for us, through us, to glorify God and not self. Okay? So we need to be doing, and worship is a very important part of our spiritual walk today. Uh, verse 20. Giving thanks always for all the things of God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Now he tells us that we are to be giving thanks. Well, we should be thankful for all that God's doing through our lives. We should be thankful for the good times, but we also need to be thankful that he's there with us during the bad times. You know, I've said it before, and, and it's, it's true. Um, sometimes God doesn't deliver us from, but uh, like we want him to, but he will deliver us through. And he's always there in either case, through or, or from, uh, Whatever the situation is, he is always right there in the midst of. I don't care what, the, what condition it may be or, or situation you may be in. I want you to know that Jesus is with you right there, right now. And he will be with you forever. And, t <laughs> and then there's going to come a day when we'll be with him. Okay, I'm going to start on this next part, but I'm not going to get through it today. But it's talking about marriage. And it's talking about Christ and the church. There's four things that it is to the wives. There's eight things for the husbands, but there's 16 things it talks about for Christ and the church. So uh, this is more for the Christ of the church, but we can learn things from it for marriage also. Uh, verse 22, wives, submit yourself to your own husband as unto the Lord. Ladies, I, I know that word submission is a, is a, is a word that, that has troubles you at times, um, but it's simply willingly allowing authority to have authority. That's my definition of it. And note that it's to your own husband, <clears throat> and it's as, as if he was the Lord. Uh, verse 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. He's talking about Christ here. Christ is the head of the church. He is our, our head. Uh, he is the Savior of the body. And yet it is a husband's part of his duties, you might say. Part of what he needs to do is to be a, a protector of the wife. He's head of it, but he's not a tyrant or a dictator, okay? Uh, verse 24, Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Okay, wives, there again, he's talking about being subject to the husband. In other words, listening to what your husband has to say. Uh, that does not mean you do not have a a say in things. Uh, I want you to understand that that there needs to be communication between you two so that you can <clears throat> have your opinion put into the situation and then he can make it. i give you a little story of myself uh, with, with my late wife and that was we was definitely against she was on one side of this issue and I was on the other side of it and we was both pretty well standing our ground. And all of a sudden, she walked up to me. She put her arms around me. She looked me right in the eye, and she says, I love you, I trust you, and whatever you decide, that's what we'll do. And I tell you, it, it took me for a, a real loop because now I realize it wasn't what she wanted, it wasn't what I wanted, but it was what was best for all of us. That was to be decided. And so that's the, that's the lesson I learned right there is that it is important to hear from my wife so that I can make a wise decision 
that we can both live with and follow and agree on. And, and that's the way the churches should be. That's the way our, our leadership in our church, that's the way our memberships of our church is be able to uh, come together, talk about those difficult situations that we may have, and yet not cause strife, but find solutions that are godly, that are righteous, that are holy, so that we can follow Christ in our walk and not cause strife and division within our church. I want you to understand I'm not done with this. I'm going to come back to it next week and, and try to, to bring out more to you. But I want you to understand right now, wives, it is important for you to have respect for your husbands, to trust him, as, as we trust the church, as we trust Christ. And yet, I want you to understand, you are not a doormat. You are not, you know, to be abused. It's his place to protect you, nourish you, take care of you, love you, as Christ does the church, as he does you and I. And once we can get past all those negative worldly things that, that come into our lives, I believe it's going to help your marriage. I believe it's going to help your Christian walk. I believe it's going to help you in your dealings with people within the church. And, and people are people, but we need to be able to deal with them in the love of Christ, submitting to one another, and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you and I so that the best opportunities can be touched, be met, and God gets the glory for it. As we close this program today, I want you to know God loves you. I want you to pray for revival. I want you to, to uh, be expecting to hear what God has to say to you about whatever's going on with you and know that it's always for your best. Sometimes it's for correction. Sometimes it's simply to say, child, I love you. Right now, if you're one of them that don't know Jesus, I want to pray with you. Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would touch someone's heart with this message of your love that you want to save them, you want to kill, that not only do you want to be a part of their lives, but you want them to be a part of yours. Accept Christ today as your Savior and follow after him in Jesus' name. Scriptures show us that you and I are all related from one person. I'd like to read a scripture in Acts chapter 17, verse number 26. It said, And hath, speaking about God creating us, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell upon the face of the earth, and hath de determined the times beforehand and the bounds of their habitation. Notice we're all of one blood, and that means Adam. The scripture says that in Adam, all die. Remember we said that the life, the last time we met was in the blood? But it says in Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. The blood of Christ brings life. The blood of Adam brings death. In Adam, all die, but in Christ, all are made alive. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us.